get us for breakfast. I say pros, but uh, that wouldn't be really appropriate here, would it? It'd be slancha. 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 Okay, so we got a lot to... We didn't drink yet, though. We okay, should yeah, drink. we should drink. Most important thing. And of <clears throat> course, we're drinking Guinness. <clears throat> Vitamin G. It's yeah. good for you in the morning. <laughs> so we got a lot to get into. You got some things coming up here. But I also want to talk about where this has all come from. So 2004, uh, Omaro's Public House opened here in Oshkosh. Why did you want to, you had never been in the bar business before, right? Uh, no, I had been in plenty of bars. Plenty of bars. <laughs> yeah. <out> of the... <laughs> uh, we, Brandy and I, my wife actually went over to Ireland a couple times. 2004 was the second time and uh, <clears throat> we really enjoyed the pub atmosphere. We liked the way they were laid out, the way that people weren't just there to be seen, they were there to meet new friends, meet old friends. It was a cool laid back atmosphere and there was not a whole lot like that in Oshkosh at the time, or in the area. <clears throat> and um, actually, when I came back, I wanted to put Guinness on draft at my house. <laughs> Randy said, no way, You, the only way you'll ever have Guinness on draft is if you buy a bar, jokingly. Six months later, I quit my job and opened this place. And you had a bar. <laughs> and I had a pub, right? <laughs> and, and what was, you know, one of the things that always kind of like I think about when I think about this place, like in 2004 when you opened, you had no macro-American lager on tap. No. And no. I think that's the only bar at that point in Oshkosh that didn't have a macro-American lager right? on tap. Yeah, when we opened, I we actually only had eight draft beers, and the draft system was on the other side of the bar, and we moved it over to get more space. And, more beers, but <laughs> when we opened, they uh, pretty much every vendor said, "If you don't put Bud Light, Coors Light, Miller Light on draft, you'll never make it in this town." <laughs> That's exactly what I told. Was told. Now, 13 years later, going on 14, uh, most of those vendors still sell for me in some form of another, and I always bring that up every year. Hey, we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, and what's interesting? So you were <clears throat> like, this was really instrumental, the whole development of the craft beer scene here in Oshkosh. Right. I mean, you were really right there at the beginning. Um, and you've progressed with that as well. So you've got 25 beers here on tap. Right. So, you, I mean, it's continued to grow in that vein. But along with that, you continue to serve Guinness, and Guinness still does very well here. It does. It does. It, you know, as we're looking at it, we're getting to keg number 2,000. The 2,000th keg. 2,000th keg it, poured at Omaro's Public House. Amazing. Um, we're at 1,998 right now, so mm. we're right there. Maybe we can get there today. Yeah, whoever kicks the uh, 2,000 gets a keg party, a Guinness keg party. So cool. You cool. probably want to work on that. But you know, it with bars that kind of emphasize craft beer, usually the clientele they come in and they drink a beer, different beer every time. They don't drink the same beer twice. Right. This is a you've been able to maintain. It's an anomaly, I guess. Yeah, right? that, definitely. That. And you've been able to people continue to come back for this here. Yeah. What's what's the difference? I, I, you know, I think when we started, again, there weren't a whole lot of bars that were serving odd beers. Right. And when we opened, I started the Genius Club, which was if you drank a Guinness, you got a point, and after 17 Guinnesses, your 18th was on us. And it all revolves around 1759, right? So 17, your 18th. When the brewery is opened right. in uh, Ireland. And then every year, if you have 59 pints, you got a t shirt. At 150, you got a plaque. At 1759, you got a Guinness keg party. Looking back when I started that program, thought it was a great idea. People still love it, and I still have people that are like uh, number three still comes to the pub all the time. Oh, really? Number seven still comes to the pub. So <laughs> going back, all, and we're at like almost 3,000 people who have signed up for the club. Damn. <laughs> right? <laughs> so looking at that, the, the um, people that did the 1,759 pints over the years, now in hindsight, was probably a bad idea because they're all <laughs> they're all catching up to it i mean i probably have at least 25 people who have done that at least that's amazing years. and some have done it multiple times so do those people come in and strictly drink guinness or are they going around other beers as well there are there's a 
a good core group of probably 100 guys or 50 guys-ish that all drink Guinness. You know, and then the, the, the newer people that come in will start with Guinness and then they eventually shift over. But there's that core yeah. group that's still drinking. Well, I wonder if there might be a return to this side of sort of beer now again, too. You know, because the one thing about Guinness, it's, what is it, 4.2% ABV? Uh, 3.9. Oh, it's even lower than that. Yeah. Okay. Trash, so, I think it's 3.9. And it's a flavorful beer. Right. And you could have a number of these, uh, whereas a lot of these craft beers are now ramping up to the point where well, you're very limited. What if, you you have an, if you have an IPA that's at 10%, really, you can have two, maybe three, and you're done. If you're a 3.9 on this, even if you're at a 20-ounce pint, you can have a few more without getting that bogged yeah. down. You know, yeah. And what do you uh, like? Do you do anything different as far as how you're serving it? Like, <clears throat> well, that being said, we have the only pub probably in the Midwest that have gone to competitions. Mike Slosher actually poured the perfect pint of Guinness. Mike Slosher the did perfect <laughs> pint of Guinness, <clears throat> timed with a stopwatch. So that was pretty cool. But we do the <laughs> we do the two part pour. Um, we have actually a blender in the back. A lot of places use a blended tank of gas, which is not bad, but it's not spot on. Okay. So we use a blender, we use a, a single tank of nitrogen, a single tank of CO2. We have a blender, which is in within 0.01% of what the blend should be. 70% <clears throat> nitrogen, 70, oh, 75, 25, so 75% nitrogen, 25% CO2. We do the two part four, we let it set for 119.5 seconds. <laughs> I didn't realize. Oh yeah, there's a whole thing that goes along with it. With it. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So what did you? I, I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Great. How many? <laughs> how many kegs of Guinness is that a day in the past 13 years? Oh, it's. Uh, I kind of average it out. If you excluded Sundays, which doesn't matter, we just say over the last 13 yeah. years, we've gone through 2.4 kegs of Guinness a day. <laughs> That's incredible. A day. <laughs> There was, Whoa. there was a time back in 2000, probably nine, 10, somewhere in that three year period where we, we were going through about a keg a day, a keg a day. And we were closed on Sunday. So, yeah. you know, if you're going through seven kegs a week, that's a pretty good, pretty good thump. Oh, and I, like I said before, the thing that amazes me is that it just continues to go this way. It does. You know, it the does. way people are so fickle now. It's nice to see a, a, a place where the people are dedicated to a beer and they keep drinking. It is kind of cool. But see, you know, at, at any given time during the week, you can look down the bar and see there's oh, yeah. six to eight people all drinking a pint of Guinness. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it is cool. It tastes great. But then, you know, after 2010-ish, 11, 12, <laughs> then we started getting into the... You know, the IPA sort of crank it through, and people were really starting to, the craft beer industry was kind of ramping up a little bit. So I, you see a lot more newer clientele and stuff coming sure. in. They may have a Guinness, because it is the best Guinness this side of Ireland, but, <laughs> you know, they switched, and now they're drinking more of the IPAs and the, the obscure beers, you know. So do you think, I mean, is this like the, you must sell more Guinness than just about anybody in the state, I think. Um, I don't know of another... You know, Moe's might sell more oh, than Milwaukee. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I could do that, but you, you know, back in the day, we cracked the top 100 in the country wow. for for Guinness sales, which yeah. you know, at, at a pub in Oshkosh, right. pretty mind blowing. Right. You know. Okay, so you've got a lot coming up here in the very near future. Uh, Friday, March 31st. Right. You have Holy Miss Moly playing here. Holy Miss Moly. So this is a well, you describe it. You tell. It's a nine-piece funk band from Florida. Um, so in the last few years, we've had some crazy bands coming through from Florida, the East Coast, yeah. that are just traveling between like, you know, West Coast tour, East Coast tour, and come up through Chicago, through Oshkosh, to Minneapolis, or back down. <clears throat> and I love live music. Mm -hmm. So we bring these bands in, and we're trying to, I, I love live music, I love live local music. Um, so not to take away from the local band and the local scene, but it's nice to get some fresh things, oh, yeah. some fresh ideas in here. So that started with the um, uh, Mad Pole Cats a few years ago. They turned us on to the Bath of Salt Zombies who came through here and people lost their minds. It was a great show. And the guys from that band now in Florida are turning me on to all these new bands that are coming up through. So I got Holy Miss Moly coming through. They have two dates in Wisconsin, us and somewhere in Green Bay. Yeah, they're playing in Green Bay also, yeah. So, yeah, this is going to be a heck of a show. Cool. A nine-piece funk band? Yeah. <laughs> I think a brass section of the whole thing. Oh, my God. Do you think uh, you'll get up there at some point in the evening? 
Yeah, I probably <laughs> There's an ulterior motive right? for this, I know. <laughs> and I love playing, too. So, you know, we've got the... the we do the open mic jam thing on, on Wednesdays. Yeah, and, right. Um, you know, and that was... That's another thing to have live music, too, is I've been to a million open mics over the years, and we approach ours a little differently. Normally, what would happen is you'd have the open mic band would play, and then you'd wait until about 1 in the morning, and then you'd have to play. That's not what we do here, so if you... If you come in, you play right away. I want to see what guys have yeah. to offer, you know? So otherwise, if you make them wait till one... Meh. Well, it's fun, and nobody's just sitting around and they're... Waiting. Hands, waiting. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, right. yeah. Okay, so then on um, Wednesday, April... 4th? 5th. 5th? April 5th, Wednesday. <laughs> he knows better than I do. I think one of us is paying attention. <laughs> you're gonna it's have a... 9.30 <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> uh, you're going to have a uh, tap table. Right, tap right. takeover uh, featuring Dogfish Head. Right. right. Yep, we're doing the Dogfish Head tap takeover to kind of back record store day. It's it's on that. They've got a record uh, store day beer. Oh, my God. And it's, uh, I can't even remember what it is. That's I don't great. Know either. We've got the Worldwide Stout, the other uh, record store day beer, and one other secret kind of fun beer that we're going to roll out that night. Um, and that kind of coincides with our Turntable Tuesday. Yeah, and you our guys are doing music. a lot of vinyl here. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Every... Every Tuesday, if you bring vinyl down, you get to play your your side. You get to play a side, and we rotate through all the players. And it's it's really kind of built momentum over the last year. So we're getting there. Yeah, it's it's, it's cool. Well, and I'll bring my six fat Dutchman records in. We'll put a, <laughs> we'll put a screeching. <laughs> you know that's funny because we actually we have played polka down here. Of course, absolutely. You, should. you play mean... what? I don't care what it is. I, even country. And I'm not a big country fan, yeah. but we listen to country. All right, one more thing. Yeah. You've been doing this uh, beer flight um, every... Every Thursday. Every, every Thursday night. Yeah, every Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with Lance Lehman. Yep. Who, uh, why don't you talk about how that works here? It's like, you, it's, uh, you get a flight of beer. Yep. Well, let me, let me tell you a little background on Lance. Lance was uh, one of my vendors for Beechwood Beer, which is has one of the largest portfolios in the state as far as craft beers. So he was my salesman for a few, and we're, we've actually, we went to school together, so we're friends, we go way back. Lance has been around, he's cool. Yeah. He has been around. Yeah. But anyway, he's um, he's working on Thursday nights, he comes in at eight, and he does uh, flights of beer. So we do a four, a four flight sampling of seven ounce beers, so that's 28, right? If, I'm, if my math is right, it's 28 ounce of, of beer for $5. An English major, right? <laughs> so 28 ounces of beer for $5. There you go. And what's cool about Lance is he has the knowledge and wherewithal to tell you about what you're drinking. Yeah, he's very so knowledgeable. He can steer you in the right direction. And yeah. I do have to say, we, it, you know, we go through a lot of bartenders, like mm-hmm. everybody does, but we try to educate everyone that works here at least about the, the basics of beer right. so they can help you. And the other cool thing is, even on uh, the flight nights, even if Lance or someone, a bartender doesn't know, customers do. And they can tell you about that. Yeah. So you've got a, a wealth of knowledge about some really good beers. Well, that's kind of what, what's cool about what's happened down here. Because you've got a lot of people here that are, you know, been drinking here for a long time. Right. Maybe 14 years ago and on now. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that is crazy. It's kind of like, you know, it's a, a true public house. It's, yeah. It's like a... Just well, like and that's homey, the thing. Like, you come in place. here and, you know, you see... It's not always the same people, but you see regulars and it's very friendly and people sure. are talking to each other. It's, it's just what a, a true Irish pub should be. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, man. Well, this is hey. cool. Thank you. Slancha. Slancha. <laughs>